Hey everyone, it's Alice and I am here with July's Book Box Jewel. So we are filming this a bit later than we normally would because Owl Crate was quite delayed this month and Owl Crate actually lost last month. They did the threads that bind and they had like a see-through cover and it didn't line up very nicely and I just wasn't really into the whole vibe of it so that does mean we'll be starting with owl crate this month because we always leave the winner until last so let us open this up and see whether this month's owl crate appeals to me any more than last month's did so this box is the oh i've got two spoiler cards that's unusual double dosing um this is the break the curse box so i will look after my multiple spoiler cards and let you know who the artists are and what fandoms have inspired the items that are included in here we will eject the puffy stuff and then we're going to dive straight into the treasured tomes pin for this month because these are like my absolute favorites and i love these things and i can't wait to see what this month is inspired by I don't consider how hard doing this would be without having like somewhere to put the boxes. <laughs> it's fine, we'll figure it out. So the treasure tomes pin this month is a very beautiful little castle in a mirror with some snow and a moon. And inside it looks like it's something inspired by Rumpelstiltskin. It says, in the mirror I had become a queen in a dark forest made of ice. And this is based on Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik. And all of these are designed by No One Designs. And this has been a monthly series this year. And I will be honest, I haven't read this book. And I'm not really that interested in it. But I do really like the design of this one. It's very beautiful. And I think it will, it will definitely appeal to all lovers of fairy tales and retellings. Whether you've read this book or not. Next up we have a little box. And the little box is... filled with a little bag <laughs> and in the little bag there is another little bag, I'm joking oh a very hard to open little bag oh I hope I'm not breaking whatever's in here oh okay is this like a wind chime no not a wind chime something that is vastly tangled inside itself hold on a moment oh right this says my curse my ruin on one side of the moon and then it has a big jemmy pendant at the bottom and this is a sun catcher inspired by violet made of thorns designed with love by Teresa chen at divine literary this is unusual i've never received one of these before I'm pretty sure my kids will really like this because it will make rainbows around our house. So we will have to hang this up in the window. I've just noticed it is still tangled. So if you haven't unboxed your one of these yet, be very careful with it because it does get a little bit tangled in transit. There we go. So it's even longer. <laughs> but yeah, this can definitely go in the window and shine some rainbows in our house. That could be very beautiful. Not an item I would have expected to get, but definitely interesting. Next up we have a little pouch and this little pouch looks like it's probably going to be a reusable tote bag because um, they did one similar to this. God it must have been a few years ago now and I've only recently started using it so this might be a sign. Yes here we go so you fold like the little bag inside the big bag and then you've always got the little bag with you so you can't lose it unlike some of the reusable tote bags when you've got the little bag separate and these are quite deep and they have quite long handles which is always pleasant um and this has like a lady dancing and a man holding out his hand to her and poppies everywhere poppies um what would i assume it was inspired by um maybe in the ravenous dark because that had poppies all over the cover and i can remember there being people dancing in that but i'm probably wrong let's find out so this bag is inspired by Howl's Moving Castle. I could not have been further off with that guess. And this is designed by Anne 
and Goyen Art. But yeah, this features Howell and Sophie. I've never seen Howl's Moving Castle. Please don't come for me. Um, but I was never going to be able to guess that. I did think I saw one of the little soot sprite things, but I didn't see it again. So that might have given it away. Are the soot sprites even from Howl's Moving Castle? Well, I'll Google that and find out after. Sean is shaking his head at me very intensely. I'm definitely wrong. <laughs> I don't also know how to fold this back up. So we're going to drop this down and I'll deal with that later. <laughs> Next up, we have what looks like a nail file, possibly. No. Pens! Which are more exciting than a nail file. And these, I'm guessing they're pens. Yeah, it's like a... Oh, highlighter one end and marker pen the other end. Ah, oh, that's nice. These are very useful. Damn. These say, love and madness are two stars in the same sky. Find the light that makes your lantern shine. And after all, every story has a story. So, and also I love, I love the colours, the purple, the pink, the blue. These are very, very nice. Don't think they've done anything like that before. So I'm, I'm happy with those. And these are... Inspired by The Wrath and the Dawn, Six Crimson Cranes, and To Kill a Kingdom. And these were designed with love by... Y I'm sorry, I'm going to get this name wrong. I'm so sorry. Yatasmin Shiropa at the Pearl Reader. Very beautiful. Definitely looking forward to using those. We then have... The next notebook i'm very happy so alk have been doing a notebook collection and it's like every two or three months they're putting in another notebook that is designed to look like a book from another story and these things i just absolutely love them the quality is amazing the designs are amazing the page count is amazing this notebook has little flowers in the corner so there's even detailing on the inside and like also look how small the gaps between the lines are. I have tiny writing, so this is perfect for me because sometimes when you have a notebook that has the really big lines, I feel like I'm wasting half of the page. But this, I can write my dinky handwriting and feel really good about it. And it says, how to live forever. What if a per What is a person if not the marks they leave behind? And then the spine is how to live forever. So it looks like a book when you put it on your shelf. And honestly, like these things are just so beautiful. These are so beautiful. I have been telling my mum about them and showing her pictures when we go over for dinner. That's how much I love this series of items. And I'm gonna guess that this could be inspired by The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue because that's about leaving marks behind and being remembered. And it has like a timer and some like stars. And I know that's part of Addie LaRue as well. There's also, wait, yeah, it's definitely Addie LaRue because it's got that star pattern on the front cover. Let me double check. Um, ba -bum -bum -bum. Yes, so this is the second faux book journal. And this is despite, despite, inspired by The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue and designed by Lichen and Limestone. So these are a huge win and I absolutely love them. And especially because we've got markers in this box so you can use those with the notebook. Owl Crate, thinking ahead thinking of the people i love it we then have the owl babble and the hint card for next month and next month is through the seasons so we'll have to check back to see what that is when i unbox it and now it's time for the book and this month's book is upside down and back to front starting well garden of the cursed by katie rose pool I've never heard of the author or the book. It's very beautifully foiled though. Like, look how shiny this is. Let me get it out of the wrap so that you can see it properly. Oh, I see skulls in the flowers. I like that. I'm very goth. <laughs> you wouldn't guess it from all of the bright colours and the non-dyed hair, but like... I'm goth on my insides, if not my outsides. <laughs> it's called being an emo. It it's called being an emo, Sean says. Hi, rude. Here we go. So you've got like this rose gold foiling on the front and then on the back you've got more foiling and it says, secrets can't protect me, only the truth can. Ooh. And then this has beautiful purple sprayed edges, liking the fact that Owl Crate are doing sprayed edges more this year. That's very cool. We've got some end paper artwork of people working in a spell shop. 
which is very cool. We've got a signed tipping page. Forgot what it was called for a second there. It's been a long day. The front foiling says Grimoire. And then the back foiling says The Ballad of the Moon Thief. I fear I'm not careful. I fear if I'm not careful, you'll steal my heart too. Ooh. By the Sorcerer Ilario. So this must be a book inside a book, I'm guessing. Oh, and then we've got people at the end. Reading. Reading together. Nicely. I like that. Okay. And we also have reverse dust jacket artwork, which is very cool. People in a bit of a romantic moment at a big ball. Everybody looking very, very cool there. So let's read the blurb and find out what the book is about because I don't know anything about it. But first of all, let me just quickly let you know who has done which of these amazing arty things. The redesigned cover is by Franziska Stern at Cover Dungeon Rabbit. The reversible dust jacket is artwork by Nicole Deal at Nicole Deal Art. There's foil designs on the hard cover case by Teresa Chen at Divine Literary. The end pages are by Lask Draws and the tipping page was designed by Teresa Chen at Divine Literary as well. So lots of different artists getting involved in this edition. So the blurb is... Since fleeing the gilded halls of Evergarden for the muck-filled canals of the marshes, Marlo Briggs has made a name for herself as the best curse breaker in Caraza City. But no matter how many cases she sold, she is still haunted by the mystery of her mother's disappearance. When Adria's Falcrest, Marlo's old crush and Sion of one of Caraza's most affluent spellmaking families, asks her to help break a life-threatening curse, Marlo wants nothing to do with the boy who spurned her a year ago. But a new lead in her mother's case makes Marlo realise that the only way to get the answers she desperately seeks is to help Adrius and return to Evergarden society, even if it means suffering through a fake love affair with him to avoid drawing suspicion from the conniving five families. As the investigation draws Marlo into a web of deadly secrets and powerful enemies, a shocking truth emerges. Adrius's curse and her mother's disappearance may just be clues to an even larger mystery, one that could unravel the very foundations of Caraza and magic itself. Definitely one I'm interested in. I'm surprised I haven't heard of this. I thought I was quite like finger on the pulse with the new releases, but I've completely missed this one. Um, definitely one I'll be checking out. It sounds like it's got a lot of different things that I like in there, and I'm excited to see what it's like. So I'll be honest with you, I don't know how Fairy Loop's going to top that. We've got markers, we've got a very beautifully redesigned book, we've got purple sprayed edges which are one of my favourite things, we've got a notebook that looks like another book, we've got a tote bag, all very useful items this month, I love the pin, I love everything about that box and I'm nervous to open this one now but I'm going to do it. <laughs> I know what book is in here, so the book in Fairy Loop this month is The Threads That Bind which Alcote did last month in an edition that I did not like. So now is the moment of truth to see whether Fairy Loop's going to do an edition that I also don't like or whether they will have done an edition that I really love. Let's see if I can get it open. Okay. So again, we're going to put the box on the floor because I no longer have a table. And I will duck in and out of frame to get items for you. <laughs> First up, we have the Nightmare Pin, designed by No One Designs. This is ominous. Oh. It literally just says the Nightmare and has trees and, like, eyes in a wood. Is this, like, a tarot card? I don't know. I can't see the spoiler card. I will let you know what that's inspired by when I get to the spoiler card um but definitely my aesthetic I love the design on the pin I think that it's very very cute I've recently done all of my pin banners up with pins in them and I'm really enjoying the way that they all look together and this will fit in perfectly with those we then have cruel intentions magnetic bookmarks designed by no one designs Ooh. oh they're just like very pretty pink pastel swords and yeah swords 
Oh, okay. That's also what I was expecting. The last time Fairy Loop did magnetic bookmarks, they put them with like quotes on them. I love magnetic bookmarks. I think they're adorable. I get nervous to use them on my special editions in case they like get nudged by something and they break the pages. Um, so I use them very, very infrequently and mostly only on like either library books or books that I don't really care about. So like absolute favourites that I've already beaten to death that I have like a nicer copy of or ones that I think I'm probably going to end up unhauling or ones that are already in bad condition. But I'll probably get some use out of these. They're definitely a good length and they're very, very beautifully designed. They just were not what I was expecting at all. We then have a Monster Family Crest coaster set designed by Bluely Boo. And I've not heard of Bluely Boo before, so I think that's a new artist that Fairy Loot are working with. Okay, and then these have Family Crests on them. So I'm guessing this is inspired by something. It says they're only a monster coasters, so this must be inspired by, is it Vanessa Chen's book? Um, and then there's a mermaid, which Sophia will love. Sophia loves mermaids, so Sophia would like that coaster for herself. There's a two-headed dog slash wolf. Ezra loves dogs, so Ezra will like this coaster for himself. There's a fox! I love foxes! I would love this coaster for myself. And then there's a phoenix! I'm pretty sure Sean can deal with having a phoenix. Oh, these are really, really cool. I love the artwork. Like, I, I will admit, like, book boxes do coasters a lot. They do drinkware a lot. I don't know how many friends they think that all of us bookish folks have, because I have enough mugs to have a tea party for, like, 100 people, and I think I've nearly got enough coasters to give everyone at that tea party a coaster as well. But like, considering we don't use them yet, I'm looking forward to when the kids are a bit older and we have a big table and we have the responsibility to use coasters without just throwing them around the room. That is going to be a good time in this family because I have so many coasters that I really, really love the artwork on and I want to use. And these are actually one of the nicest sets that Fairy Loot has done. Like, they're all different colours, they're all very unique. A lot of their sets all look quite similar, so they'll have different characters from the same book series, like, done in a similar art style, or they'll have quotes done in a similar art style, but these are all very unique, and I'm very much a fan of those. Lots of useful items this month. I love the useful item months. And now we come to a slightly less useful item, which is Collection of Magical Tomes Volume 2. I... These are designed by Chatty Nora, by the way. Um, a lot of people absolutely love these. I personally am not a fan because what the magical tomes are, are cardboard boxes that kind of look like books. So you can put them on the shelf and you can store things inside them, but they're about the same like height as a book. But you can see my problem. Like they're taller than my paper bags, but they're a lot shorter than my hardbacks. You can't see that, that's out of frame. But they're a lot shorter than my hardbacks. So there's nowhere that I can put these on my shelves where they look natural. So the illusion of it looking like a real book is lost on my shelves. Um, but this is the Book of Fate. It has it on the spine and then on the cover. And then it makes it look like a proper book. They've got the Ex Libris stamp in there. It's quite deep. It's got the look as though it's kind of old glued paper. And the fact that it's purple, it's very, very beautiful. It's just, I didn't have any use for the first one. I don't really need a second one. I don't really store stuff in boxes like this because I feel like the stuff I need to store either won't fit or I'll forget what I've put in it or as soon as I open it, it'll all just be a chaotic mess in there where I've like put it in and then closed it and then stood it upright. If you've got any ideas of what to store in these that won't have that happen to them, then please do comment and let me know. Um, but I, I'm not going to get any use out of this personally, but I know these are quite popular with other people. So we just realised we've been filming for 10 minutes with absolutely no audio being registered. So <laughs> we're going to dive back into this and I already know what's coming. You don't know what's coming yet. So we're going to pretend we can still get excited and we still don't know what's going on. We have socks. Inspired by The Wicker King by Kay Ancrum. These are absolutely stunning and they're designed by Jess Hawk. I love the fairy loot socks, I wear them for work, they're a very good material and even though they're not from a book that I know about, I can still enjoy them because they are quite a subtle design. So definitely trying to appeal to more people with those. And then we have the book. Um, we'll do the tarot cards again as well because um, you won't have seen those. The tarot cards this month are 
the Page of Stars and the Knight of Stars. And these are inspired by Sorcerer of Thorns by Margaret Rogerson. And the characters are Nathaniel and Elizabeth and they are illustrated by Rosalyn Arts. So we will just quickly briefly over review everything because I've actually found the spoiler card now. So the enamel pin of the nightmare is inspired by One Dark Window by Rachel Gillig. Um, Fairy Loot have recently announced that they're doing the sequel to that book and I wasn't previously interested in it. I can't remember why but I had no interest in picking it up at all and I was considering unhauling it. So I'm more drawn towards it now I've seen that gorgeous pin because it's definitely my aesthetic. Um, the coasters are Vanessa Lenz, Only a Monster. I think I said Vanessa Chen, but I, I haven't read it yet, so I can't remember the author's names. Um, and then the magnetic bookmarks say, Revenge takes on an elegant shade of pink with these Cruel Intentions magnetic bookmarks. Apparently that's the theme for this month, Cruel Intentions. I don't know if it's inspired by a book or inspired by a film, but I now have magnetic daggers that are pink and beautiful something to do with cruel intentions. Now let's move on to the book. We have the artwork here of the two main characters on the back of the author letter and that is by Pan Preha. And I will just put the book back together because I've already seen the beginning of it but you haven't so you don't need to get any spoilers. Do -do 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 so the book this month is The Threads That Bind by Kika Hazopolo. I am sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong. I definitely should have looked up the pronunciation after I obviously butchered this name in last month's video. Um, this is much more beautiful than the Owlcrate edition. The Owlcrate edition was very weird. It had like a see-through cover and then it had like Grecian columns on it that didn't quite line up and it all looked a little bit kind of cobbled together. No offense to Owlcrate, I'm sure they had like a way that they were trying to do it but it didn't really appeal to me but I love purple and blue I love this color scheme I love the subtle foiling all of the foiling is being thrown at these books this month and I think that it's absolutely brilliant I'm a very big fan of it we've got gorgeous galaxy print sprayed edges at the top and the bottom and stenciled edges on like a purple galaxy print with like a moon and a dagger and an eye and this is like my entire aesthetic I love all of this shit We've then got inside end papers of like a character being pulled by like puppet strings and this is giving me vibes from like a piece of artwork that I saw to advertise Juno Dawson's Her Majesty's Royal Cabinet and Her Majesty's Royal Coven, what am I doing? Um, and I really like that piece of artwork so getting those vibes from this I really love. We also have foil on the dust jacket on the hardcover case. I've lost all of my words. I no longer care. We have foil on the hardcover case of one of the main characters like playing with the threads, which is really cool. Um, just gonna check and see if we've got artwork at the other end paper, because we often do. Yes, we have a man also surrounded by the threads, but with like the different moons, which is very cool. And then we have this absolutely stunning alternative cover which is so different and I really really hope that it's the same size as the Owlcrate edition because if it is then I can just use this on my Owlcrate edition and then I have two very beautiful editions it, instead of one which I would be very happy with um but this is absolutely beautiful this is the kind of quality that we expect from fairy loot and this is the kind of quality that keeps people subscribed for like years on end because they have hit the mark with this edition like there is nothing more that they could have added there is nothing more they could have done this is beautiful this is like the pinnacle this is why i've always loved fairy loot because they do these they just put it out of the bag and it's amazing so Let's find out which artists have done what on this cover. So we've got the reversible dust jacket by Blanca Design. The exclusive cover must just be from the publisher because it's not credited. Uh, the digital sprayed edges, the foil on the hardcover and the artwork on the end papers are all by Niraz, which is like N-I-R-4-Z. Um, and then again, we've got the author letter with the character print by Pamprinka. So lots of people involved in the creation of this edition and it's definitely paid off. So let me read you out the blurb and you can see if you're interested in the book. I did read it out last month but just in case you haven't seen it because it's the same book in two different months. 
In the city of Atlante, the descendants of the Greek gods live alongside mortals. Io is Moira born, descended from the fates. She can see threads, shimmering silver lines connecting every person. When a relationship is formed, a new thread appears. When a person's life thread is cut, it's their time to die. Io uses her gifts as a private investigator, trying to make ends meet in a world which treats other born people like her with suspicion and prejudice. Then Io is witness to a murder, but this is no ordinary murder. Io can see that the killer's life thread is severed. They should be long dead. More complicated still, there is another witness, Edie, a member of the violent Rossi mob who rule Atlante, and what Io can see immediately, although Edie cannot, is that there is a bright silver fate thread connecting them. This boy is her destiny. Io and Edie are thrown together to solve the case, and as Io grapples with the dark secrets lurking beneath Atlantis' surface, she must decide whether to embrace her fate and give in to the feelings growing between herself and Edie, or whether to cut the thread and set him free. So this sounds so interesting and I'm really really interested in this book and my interest in it almost got destroyed by the Alcrate edition because it was just so unappealing to me and this is very very beautiful and I'm very happy to have received it. It's so nice and this is why I keep both subscriptions even when they do overlapping editions and this also has a signed to pin page. Um, I think think it's digitally signed let me see digitally sprayed signed by the author it doesn't say if it's digitally or hand signed so we're going to say it's hand signed so that's a point in fairy loot's favor as well because they haven't done many hand signed books this year so now to decide which one wins Right, let me just like spread everything around and try and figure it out. So on the one hand, I'll create have a beautiful pin that I love. And on the other hand, Fairy Loot have a beautiful pin that I love. On the one hand, I'll create have a reversible tote bag, a reusable tote bag that I will use. On the other hand, Fairy Loot have three magnetic bookmarks, which I will use. Then we consider the markers I love the markers and the coasters. I love the coasters. And then you get down to the collection item. A fake notebook inspired by a book from the world. Magical tome. Like an empty cardboard box to store things in. There's a dramatic difference there on how much I enjoy those, but there's also a dramatic difference on how much I enjoy the books because the sprayed edges on the Owlcrate edition, albeit they're solid purple and they're beautiful, but I do really like the sprayed edges on this one where they're stenciled. This is the closest one that we've had in a very long time, but... I'm gonna go with Owlcrate and I don't feel like an instant surge of remorse which is nice and I don't feel like I would have felt an instant surge of remorse even if I'd gone with Fairy Loot because it is that close but it's just because of those collectible items. I think as I said earlier there is a huge fandom for those magical tomes, there's a huge fandom for like the concealed books on the shelves and that's all good for them but this way with Owlcrate I get a book on the shelf that looks like a book it's closer to the size of like a paperback so it fits in nicer on my shelves and I find them very beautiful and very useful so that is actually what's done it for this one um Fairy Loot if it was just book versus book Fairy Loot would have won with that edition but this is book box jewel and as a box as a whole Owlcrate is the winner this month so please let me know down in the comments if you agree or disagree with my decision. Um, let, give this video a like if you liked it. I'm sorry it got a bit chaotic in the middle there where we had the problems with the sound. But we made it through together and that is the most important thing. I'm Alice, this is The Bumbling Blogger and we will see you soon with another video. Thank you for watching. Bye! Starting with Owlcrate this month because we always do the winner at the end. I said book box battle. It's not book box battle anymore. I need to start again. <laughs> Let's try this again, shall we?